that there, put that there, right there. Right. Welcome to From Scratch to Shelf. I am Keith Franks of Cutlass Board Games. This is Steve D of Tin Star Games, and today we've got special guest, friend of the show, uh, Jason Tam from Toto Tam. Hello, I believe is the name of the business now. Toto Tam, fantastic. Uh, yeah. So we've actually shouted you out on the podcast several times, and also you've walked past in frame several times. <laughs> Because um, uh, Jason is also here in the Game Plus office pretty regularly. But um, do you have a space uh, as well? You have a membership here, yeah. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah, it comes That's in great. a little laptop. Does a little bit of work while we're yeah. noisily chatting away in the other room, which I'm sure is very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Omnians. Yeah. But uh, what I wanted to do is is show off Jason a, a little bit this episode. He's got some cool stuff to show off because you've got a Kickstarter coming up, which we'll get into. The rising but, star um, in the game with, the, with the, the Fire Noodle Eating Champs. Um, recently seen at South by Southwest. Recently seen at PAX. Uh, yes. Powerhouse um, Museum. Powerhouse Museum as well. Yes, that's yes, right. Work in progress. So pretty much every place that we've been as a podcast and talked about, Jason has also been there doing the same thing, showing us the thing. stuff. Yep. Um, so I kind of wanted to get your perspective on a lot of those events and things that you've been doing and stuff like that. Yep. Probably, I think, what, Powerhouse was the first one chronologically of the uh, event season? Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, if you don't count the, la- the, the official launch day in Melbourne, where, where I launched the game first. Oh, all right. I was, so chronologically, how, yeah, the one that you want, yeah. So if you want to go back chronologically, I launched this game in May. Um, okay. had a launch party down in Melbourne. So that's um, interesting that, that you, were, you were launching it even though you hadn't gone to Kickstarter. Was there like, how many copies did you have? Was it I just... had like five copies of it. Right. Um, and it was just like a, yeah, prototype launch. Because like, I guess, you might as well, you might as well just tell the whole story of yep. the whole game. And Why don't you start, actually there. even before that, how did you decide to become a game designer? How long, what's, what's your background? My you... back? Oh, okay, sure. Don't let's go all the way back to where you were born. born. <laughs> <laughs> when I was born. <laughs> when I was born. I was born. <laughs> so let's start in high school. It was like I think every team three. <laughs> Actually, summer of 1999, I think that's when yep. I wanted to be a game designer and right. all of that. But basically, I don't know, just every single teenage boy's dream is just to become a game designer, playing too many games. I, mean, I wanted to be a DJ. Like that. Making games came much later. <laughs> there you go, which you, which you did though. I did. Mm. I did both of those things. Living the dream. Um, weirdly. Nice. Um, I'm ready to retire from both of those things, yeah. so they keep pulling me back in, baby. <laughs> But yeah, but for board games, um, well, just video games itself, always wanted to make video games, messed around with like Game Maker and you know, the Tech Source forums back in the day. Did you go to did you games study and everything game like design? that? Um, so I studied computer science when I was, got into university. Because um, the advice back then was like, you either do art or you do programming. Mm. Yeah. And computer yep. science was a was a course that I yeah, ended up choosing. Uh, it wasn't didn't game, like it. It wasn't a game design course back then in 2000. No, there wasn't any. Courses Nothing in like game that. design. No, it's there were some new. Yep. forums and there were some forums, some books out there. Like uh, what was a good one? Like uh, uh, I think like the theory of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, there's actually a lot there. more books that. out these days. Oh yeah, right now there's a lot more. Cultures books massively right changed in twenty yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. I see a lot of big names coming out and being like, "Well, this is my game design how to." <laughs> so many. And I'm like, "Wow, maybe everyone just needs to They're selling courses and like, stuff." It, these it, days the as well. equivalent of being a scientist and becoming a professor mm-hmm. yeah. is like being a board game designer and then becoming an author. Everybody's <laughs> going. Not, not much money in selling games, but there's a lot of money in selling my advice on games. So yeah, yeah. I'm mm-hmm. actually working on a book about world building for game design. Oh, yeah. So. Couple that of years is we'll see that. one of Steve's specialties. You've yep. been doing that yep. as, a, as a panel and stuff as well. Yep. There we go. Just kind so of hopefully that will do some learning there. Um, yeah. But back back to your story. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. launch so event. You had some copies of the game. Launch event. Yeah. Well, like this. Well, yeah. So basically, so this game originally was a video game. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So it came out of a video game jam down at the Sabbatical Gallery in Melbourne. What year was um, that? Here this year. This year. Um, wow. Early this year. Yeah. Um, and the Sabbatical Gallery is like this really cool. Uh, uh, what do you call, how do I say it? It's oh, like a video you? game. No, it's like a co-working space, but then they also do a lot of video game stuff, and they just, yeah, they, the, they're uniting the whole Melbourne game community post-COVID. Okay. Um, yeah, Melbourne is the, is the place for game design, in, in, in both digital and, and board game. Yeah, yeah, in Sydney, anyone will complain if they have to travel for more than five minutes <laughs> to go to any place. Also, Melbourne has more government funding as well. Oh yeah, mm. yeah, the Victoria... Yeah. Grants have just kicked back in. Yeah, yeah. Screen Victoria doing big um, stuff, a lot mm-hmm. of the other stuff going on. And just on. a lot of a lot of studios there, a lot of game designers. So if you want to go anywhere in the world for, for well, anywhere in Australia, 
Melbourne is yeah, yeah. But Absolutely. you're not and in they Melbourne. On, and they put on events like, this, like the yeah, Game Jam there. So, so was yeah. it a 24-hour jam? Or? It was like a one-week-long one jam, I think. Or like right. they had a month. Uh, uh, yeah, I think they had like a one month every week they made a new game or something like that. And then after the four months, they did a showcase for the public. Amazing. And yep. yeah, I got to play a bunch of games. And yeah, I went to the public exhibition of it. I played a bunch of games. And by New Eating Champs, by Wombok Games, um, caught my eye. And played it, and I was like, "Hey, this is really cool. I really like it." Um, and then the next day, I kept thinking about it on a, on a train ride down to Frankston. And I was like, "Hey, I reckon I can turn it into a board game." Mm-hmm. So yeah, ah, I made a board game out of it. Yes. Um, and then reached out to the uh, to Wombok Games, and yeah, we collaborated to make this. Essentially, she did the art for this, the license for the um, for the name, and yep. I made the board game. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, and then after prototype one, I was like, "Hey, let's launch it and let's do something at the Savvy Gallery." Really, celebrate really it into that a little bit first right because uh for an equivalency i think what people understand that process to be like is like there's a big witcher board game on game found mm-hmm. right now so huge. which of the game is really big and is run by a huge company and has a lot of people in it and then the people making the board game license the rights to, to use the characters in the universe and stuff like that then develop the board game and then like it all gets really separately by several people in this scenario i'm pretty confident it's you one dude talking to one bot games which is probably also one person mm-hmm. and being like hey can we work together in some capacity yeah exactly i just pretty much like added her on insta and then mm. yeah reached out I was like hey i like your game i want i want to make a board game out of it can we do something together yeah and then we got yeah we're getting all the legal stuff required for that um in down in writing um okay. yep. but, nice yeah, contract always nice important contract yep. and everything um but yeah it's just 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 simple it's just a matter of asking it's a, it's a good point because a lot of people i think sort of go ah oh, i really love you know Star Wars, and it's like, yeah, you're not going to get the license for Star Wars for your first Legendary game. Legendary when it's my emails. Yeah, but if you connect to other designers in, in your field, and pe- maybe people are even making short films or writing their first book <laughs> mm-hmm. or making video games, then they've got assets and they've got an audience, and you can go, hey, you're just one person and you need my help a little bit. Like, Star Wars doesn't need you. Mm, um, exactly. And they'll be like, yeah, you, only, if you, only if your game is selling a million copies, then, then we'll talk. But if someone who is trying to get their property out, they're gonna wanna mm. talk to you and, and you might be able to get like art, for example, you mentioned, and as I said, the audience is already there somewhat. Yeah. Lots of crossover help, so that's a great yeah, idea. Yeah. Um, mm. And a great reason to talk to fellow collabor- collaborators. Yes. Make yeah. fellow collaborators. Make fellow collaborators. <laughs> make friends. Make friends. Make friends. Yep. Yeah. Work, yeah. Make friends with people in the industry and like uh, in the other side of the industry as well. From yep. Video games. Yep. Mm. But yeah. So anyway, so I reached out, made a game. Then version one, I was like, when version one happened. Version one finally happened, and I was like, hey, cool. We should do. We should have a launch party that combines both the video game and the board game. So we okay. at the sabbatical gallery. We right. Met. Nice. Yep. So yeah, we threw one on and then made it into something bigger. When I reached out to some sponsors to okay. like yeah get to uh, to give some games give away at the event. Yeah. Got some beer sponsors as well to get some booze at the event and yeah yeah and we're like all right month later month later we yeah launched launched down in Melbourne. Um, so I think that yeah, I'm going to be drilling you constantly about elaborating on stuff because this is also a really good point is that you've, you're you really good at activations. Mm-hmm. You literally did a talk at DevCon about product activations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Check it out. It's online. We'll which is it's really good to do that because it was really good. Yep. Um, you did a Sellers of Catan tournament um, that I went to and mm-hmm. it had really good activations, same sort of thing. Um, you had beverage sponsors. You had... A DJ come along. You had a whole bunch of different people joining what games and stuff as prizes. Activation. Yeah, it's a bit. I guess it's just like a technical term of like events and stuff. It was like activation. Uh, it doesn't have to be like specifically an event. It can be like um, it can be a stall. A it stall can be a person in a costume like, on a corner. What's the, what's the difference between activation and marketing? Is they saying, are they the same thing? A marketing thing? activation is, yeah, pretty much. Marketing is, like, is that an instance of marketing? It's an instance yeah. of it, yeah. Well, like, for example, I don't know, in South Most Southwest, digital marketing is a campaign. Right. Yeah, a campaign also can be an activation as well. Yeah. Um, but just like a thing that happens. A thing that happens, right. Um, yeah. Because <laughs> t- yeah, the term is just, it's, it, I wanted to clear that up. My breakfast this morning was a fine noodle eating champs activation. <laughs> That's a, a very valid sentence. Yeah. Mm. 
But yeah, I think it's uh, interesting because a lot of the marketing that designers and creators in this space kind of fall into, it comes from advice on the how to build the Kickstarter campaign, mm. which is usually uh, content creation type stuff and Facebook ads and mailing list type stuff. Yep. Not many people. Everything else. Yeah. yeah, not many people are coming and doing a, a big event or getting a bunch of people together or uh, doing content creation like we are. Um, which I think is really interesting. And it was really cool to see the talk at DevCon as well, you know, big panels and slides and talking about um, communicating with the people and collaborating and stuff, um, which I think obviously is going to help a lot. But you don't, yeah, have a marketing, like, you don't have a marketing background? No, not really. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did graphic design in university right. and had, did a little bit about marketing there and then during lockdown did like a big tape course on marketing. Uh, um, that's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that, that's it. it's, I think it's clearly paid off, um, and you've got things. That, we'll see. We'll see yeah. what happens in December first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, we'll see what happens. so far it looks good, but we'll see how we're going. So yeah. Um, so we, we've covered Sabbatical. Yep. Next is Powerhouse. Sure. Yeah, why are you in Sydney? When if the, if you came from Melbourne, are you, are you living up here now? Hmm? You've always lived in Sydney. Yeah, I've always lived in Sydney. Yeah, I just happened to be in Melbourne. Thinking of escaping. Right. I keep saying I'm changing. moving to Melbourne for like there. the past six months, but like. I'm <laughs> yeah. So you found you found you found this game from Melbourne. Online? No, no, no. So I went down there. there. So I went down there for a uh, for a holiday, and also there was a crocodile tournament. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. (laughs) There's a game out there as well. So very cool. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Now we're up to speed. I was like, where do you live? He lives in Sydney. (laughs) Yes. Mystery solved. Mystery solved. Now we're next mystery. Yeah. Powerhouse Museum. Sure. Let's go. Let's go to Powerhouse Museum. So, um, essentially, let's see. You had a table there. Had a table there. Um, Luella and Chloe just Mm -hmm. uh, put out a a thing on Facebook about like uh, yeah, asking people to showcase there if they want for Powerhouse late night kind of thing. I got a a Twitter DM from Chloe being like, "Hey, I've got your email address. (laughs) Can you get in touch with me?" Make friends. Um, there we go. Um, <laughs> to then come in and show it off. But it was just like a, a long series of tables. Mm. Uh, Steve and I were right up next to the plane, mm. uh, but then you were on right the opposite. other end. Yeah, I was on the other side of the plane. to see mm. uh, many of you running demos. No, but yeah, it was a big night. It was a big night. Like, yeah, just people coming through, playing games. Um, you were also like right by the, the kind of entrance point. Mm-hmm. So no one could walk past and not see what you were doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm imagining you were as busy there as you were at South by Southwest. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah, I mean, it also helps that my game is like a very demo-friendly game. Mm. Uh, it takes like five minutes to like play and learn. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because it's just a dice rolling, um, dice rolling race game. So yeah, it's very easy to learn and very quick to play and very demo-friendly. We were talking yeah. to someone the other day about how the clever use of the, t- the mint tin and the, the way that you roll it creates this noise that captures people's attention. So, yeah, the, so um, the yeah, dice tray balls. The dice tray balls. Yeah, so yeah. for those who don't know, this is a game with about what? How many dice are in the box? Eight, car, uh, eight, eight dice, uh, 18 cards. Nice, very nice and simple. But when you roll those dice on a, in a steel bowl, it makes this lovely clattering noise that you can hear all over the con and makes it sound like something really exciting is going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a really good way to just get people to draw over. So I'm sure noisy games are going to be a hit next year. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's great. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, intentionally, yeah, intentionally chose metal metal bowls. Yeah, for the noise. Bring, yeah, yeah, to bring to all my uh, demos and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, because I yeah want people to be coming to my booth and coming to my section. And, Seen it, wanting to know what's and, going on. Uh, with that many, um, with, with just eight dice, how many people can play? Uh, two. Okay, so two yeah, but then you can buy multiple copies of it, which I've been yeah. doing a lot. Yeah. Um, to play like four or six, you can play a million players if you really want Fantastic, to. Fantastic, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Players, it's all simultaneous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. Excellent. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, what's the price point while we're here? I don't know, you tell me. All right. I'm working that out. Uh, I would say yes. 20 bucks. Okay. Yeah, That's probably, my, probably my 20, creation. 25 would be, I, I think, where you want it. 20 if you want to sell lots of copies, maybe. Well, 25 or, or 40 if you buy two. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's I think that's way. the way to go. Um, yeah. So my cut reaction. Also depends. Says. Sometimes, is, well, it's a good question. Some people do Kickstarter being a bit cheaper than retail mm. these days to get people to buy in. Mm-hmm. Other people prefer it to be the same. Um, definitely have a lot of sympathy of the the diff- difficult decisions you're going through right now mm-hmm. of trying to figure out your price yeah. point and your your goals for your Kickstarter. How's that going? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm still figuring figuring it all out. Yeah. Um, but I, but yeah, for this Kickstarter, I just wanted to because it's my first Kickstarter. It's um, what's it called? 
first yeah first game and all that and like I know that I'm not going to get that many backers for it mm-hmm. for it um because yeah it's not a, it's not a as, as, as much as I'm like collaborating with this video game developer um we don't have like a big audience we don't yeah. have a big brand or anything like that um so the trees to train the Kickstarter is just like a marketing campaign just yeah. to um get some games out there and then yeah, and then maybe yeah, six months time launch another Kickstarter where mm-hmm. then I focus more on doing um, massive room run yep. and doing retail and all that. Uh, so because yep. yeah. you're also you're also not new to the game design industry. No, right? no like you've been around the, for a long time. I understand the game yeah. as a graphic designer, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. this to me feels like you're doing a a proof of concept kind of thing. Like you could be on the other side of the fence as well. You yeah, pretty much artist. expanding yeah. my skill set, I well, suppose. Have you, have you got any consultation on all that? Yeah. Or like, mm. yeah, I know, just building up marketing experience and running mm. Kickstarter. Have like you that. have you worked on any published games? I have. Yeah. yeah. Listen, um, give us your So stats. the first, well, okay, let's go back to <laughs> twenty twenty when I first got my start. So uh, let's see, Great Creative and Cool Silver Studios uh, mm. was my first. Uh, yeah, I worked with them to on Agents of Smirsh. Uh, oh, yeah. Second edi- the, what's the second edition? What's it called? Um, Epic Edition, I think it's called. Yep. Yeah, yep. so I did the book for that. Um, worked on some bunch of other games I can't really talk about. No, um, and yes, you worked, worked on something for one of my games. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, did. Yeah. One of the Kickstarter awards, greatly, lately delivered, um, nice. was like a... A yearbook thing for the the Winnie Life by Daylight Game. Oh, sure fantastic! Um, yeah. Which I was like, this is a thing that I've put on, like, put away for so long, um, hoping that maybe stuff will get added to it. Never really happened. I was like, you know what? I know a guy that can do this, and then it'll be done, and I have to stop worrying about yep. it. <laughs> that's, that's my um, job. I got in touch. So, so, that's so that's if really you need good, graphic so, yeah. design. That's me. We'll, we'll, He's a man. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. absolutely. Yeah. Just done, Jason, and. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, as I think, you know, I think people might also want to hire you for your marketing skills now that we, uh, well, well, again, after December 1st, skills. And your <laughs> activation <laughs> skills, so, yeah, yeah, is sure. that something you've thought about doing? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I just want to help people bring games to life, I can, yeah. do a lot of things, I just essentially just want to help people make games to life, um, mm. I don't know, I learned a lot over the past few years, like, working on game projects from, like, Kickstarter games to smaller games, and then I used to work at Launch Tabletop. So I contract oh, designer right. there, so like you know, I did the branding there. I did the I did like some UI UX stuff and like yep. help create launch lab and everything. So mm-hmm. yeah, I learned a lot of skills about like board game production, um, manufacturing and stuff. So yeah, and this is kind of game kind of gave me the confidence to make my own to make my own game. And then after years of like you know backing games and yeah, all this all, and, yeah all this stuff, all this, yeah backing games and like all the uh, what's called all the advice that I always give out to people mm. like you know. Hey, um, everyone's always asking me how to make a game and everything like that. I was like, yeah, start small, do this, do this. Yeah. And they don't take my advice. I'm like, yeah. you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna take my own advice. Take your yeah. advice. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, so, that is funny. Uh, so for people who don't know, Launch Tabletop is an amazing thing that was set up in Australia and Hong Kong to help people make prototypes of their games. Mm. Um, it's designed for short orders, so maybe fifty or so at the most. Maybe. No, um, you can do one. You can do what? Fifty yeah, at the most, one on the least. Hmm? No, 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 a thousand at most. A thousand at most. Yeah, so you can do a small run of that. So, like, it's build of launch tabletop essentially yep. allows you to make retail quality games um, at a relatively affordable price. So, yep. and you can, there's no MOQ on it because normally when you go to a mass manufacturer they have or to, to manufacture, you have to ma- you have to order like at least a thousand. Yeah, and some of them you some can order like five hundred and all that. Usually a thousand. Yeah, but yeah, but in order to get economical, you need to be like a thousand, two thousand, even like five thousand would be yeah, something to, yeah. to get to get your return. Yeah, to get a return yeah. on it. But with Launch Tabletop, it allows you to create retail quality games on like you're just printing one copy of it. Yeah, um, like it's going to be more expensive than like um yeah you know having thousand and printing a thousand of them. Um, at like yeah, lower prices. It's, that it's, it's, you can take advantage of like scaling and everything. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But if you just want one copy and really high quality, yeah, this is what I, I printed this with on tabletop. So yep. yeah, um, and and especially a, with like the custom dice. A beautiful see. interface that makes things easy. If you've got a little bit of art, and a little bit, you know, you don't need a huge amount of graphic skill. Um, I've been very, very impressed with the things that, that they that I've produced through them as well. Mm. And okay. yeah, if you want a prototype, if you yeah, want some cards and stuff as well, prototypes to show off to people. Um, if you want hot, um, if you want to make just a couple this of games for you hot. and your friends, and you don't really want to go to Kickstarter yeah. because you're like, I just need, I've got two hundred dollars and I want to make five games for me and all my friends to prove that mm. I'm a game designer. 
you know? Which is super valid. Yeah. yeah. I, Absolutely. I think there'd be a funny scenario, which is you make exactly one and you take it to a retailer and like, this is the only one yeah. here like, on the shelf. <laughs> I imagine that given the, the, like they have this thing, like about 10 years ago, there were so many nerd t-shirts, they made that thing where it was only an offer for like a week oh, for each yeah, t-shirt yeah. and then they were gone. So the yeah. rarity went up. So look, I'm betting next year someone will do. There's only Bespoke five copies of these games. Once yeah. you get them, they're gone. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe that's your maybe that's your idea waiting for you. You could sell Gloomhaven for a thousand dollars doing that. Yeah, um, I reckon. But yeah, one-off story that only one person can play. Or maybe you make a game that has to be passed on or something. Um, cool. Yeah, um, I think it's an interesting thing to explore, and I think it's also yeah great to just make a game that you can just play or share. Um, you know, 5, 10, 20 copies, 50 copies. Mm. It stops you having to invest in a Kickstarter, Big. which can cost an enormous amount of money these days to get all the art ready. Yeah. Um, it just depends on your goals as well. That's like, right. If you want to, like, you know, it just, if, you, if your goal is just like you want a few copies for your friends and family to enjoy, then yeah, Launch Tabletop is a way to go with that. And then, like, if you want to actually go to sell your game at retail stores and figure out all the manufacturing and shipping and distribution and all that kind of thing then yeah you can yeah watch tabletop is like a good way to help you onto that and then yep. yeah talk to then talk to like nice manufacturers mm. yeah we'll get just a really nice looking prototype to run yeah. demos at events that's it that's what i've been doing for mm. mine um that's yeah like to do. and a lot of people already say like oh where can i buy a copy of your game because it looks done it looks yep. done yeah yep. yeah that's right the advice i got early on was that if your game doesn't look complete people think you are there looking for advice that's right if your game does look complete then people actually think that you're there selling a thing yeah absolutely so i think it there's definitely their expectations yeah yeah mm. um absolutely and um so if you do want feedback you, you have to be explicit you know even though this looks nice please tell me what you think yeah if you're at that stage having a good um post play test Q one A type thing yeah, is really good, especially if you like filling. have a specific thing that you're testing or whatever. Is always yep. really good. Yep. But that brings us to the next thing, which was you were at PAX and mm-hmm. you were in the collaboratory I was, yeah. instead of something like showcase. Mm-hmm. And the collaboratory is aimed more at games in development. Mm-hmm. But this, what at the time was pretty done, right? It's still in development. Still, mm-hmm. um, like there's still some art changes that we need to make. I mean, it's like ninety percent of the way there. Um, in fact, just from 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 the time I made it back in early this year, like it was pretty much done. Yeah. Um, but I'm still refining stuff, but it's still not yeah ready for retail shows. Some um, games yeah. race to about 80, 90 percent, and then that last 10 percent takes 90 percent of the time. Yeah. The small little edges that make it better. Um, refining it. What, is there a change you made in the last week or so? Uh, just some art changes. Yeah. Um, so for example, in this edition here, I have. Um, if you want to show, yeah. show it closer to the camera. Um, so I got the corn and got the egg over there. Yeah. <clears throat> so the corn oh, and the egg, they are too similar in color. Ah, uh, yep, yep. So when people, because like the whole aim of the game is you're rolling these and so rolling really fast. Really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Really color, really fast. This and also people confuse the, the corn as like oil, egg, egg, or like butter, or something I thought, like that. Yeah, I thought, at first this I thought it was egg as well. Yeah. Um, as well as egg as this well. This didn't have text on it. When no, I this one, it. yeah, this one I added that because like, so the spicy face came from the video game because right. um, it, when you stuff up, you can make, it goes, ah, spicy. Yep. But like people out of context from the video game, people didn't understand what the face was. So I was like, you know what, I'll just add some text to just yeah, yep, refine absolutely. it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just that. And then just making some changes to the rule book just to make yeah. sure, yeah, just think, did some blind testing the other day. Um, and yeah, there's some things I just need to change for the Yeah, I blind tested one. this at Tabletop Tuesday and it was honestly one of the scariest things ever. Because <laughs> I sit down Full and play this game. That, was that, would be, that would be absolutely hilarious. So, so we're going to go back to manufacturing and get rid of the spiders? Yeah. You think? No, because <laughs> what happened was I sit down at the thing and Jason goes, here's my game. Here's this big placemat, which is a rule book. Here's the thing. All right, go on. And I'm like, do I not get to ask questions or anything he's like no, no I should go on there in the rule book and yeah. I'm like looking at him like am I doing it right and he's like oh we'll talk about it after I'm yeah. like, oh my god <laughs> what, you, don't, sure. you, don't, you don't do that <laughs> no I'll, I'm happy to walk people through stuff um, but I'm watching for stuff differently like uh, when they're asking questions about things I'm like is that because it's confusing or I've explained <laughs> it poorly or whatever 
Because normally I don't have a written rule book until the very end. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Cutlass that I'm testing at the moment doesn't. It has a Google Doc, which is dog shit. Mm. Uh, no, it has good. a couple of diagrams that yeah. help some stuff, but most of it is delivered uh, by word of mouth these days. I do think that when you get to near this end, where you've got a, you've got a rule book, it is really good to just give it and walk away. Because you want to see these, these points where people... Yeah, well, we discovered a, yeah. um, a visual path problem, right? I missed an entire section because the way that uh, it reads was like yep, this, yep. running diagonally across the thing, which had a little void section that we just completely missed. Uh, yep, yep. Um, and that's the thing is people like... A, a lot of people, when they're thinking about how to design a game, they're like, I need to build rule. I need, I need to build a system. So mm. they build all the mechanics in the game. But a lot of the game is a lot of game design is making it usable by people who have no idea who you are and have never seen it before. Yeah. So yeah. rules design and rules testing and blind testing, as they call it, is the most important thing ever. And I, yeah, it's the recipe thing, right? Like yeah. if someone if has Sarah Lee is not in the room with me, can I still make the cake? That's right. That's right. <laughs> and and that's a very fine art. Um, video games. By comparison, often have more, a bit more space with the tutorials. Mm. They can give you a thing to play around with and, and put information on the screen, and they can also maintain the rules for you. You can't make a mistake. Mm. Do, you know, video yeah. games have. Uh, I think uh, there's this great quote from this game designer about video games and board games. Um, like video games have lo uh, laws that you can't break. Yep. Um, because you're bound by just the programming limitations of that. And in, in board games, there are. Um, more so, not laws, and more so guidelines. Yeah. Um, where like people yeah. can and will break your game, and like yeah, yeah. just want to that. by mistake, by mistake, all all by that. and by, by yeah. assumption, like they were just like, yeah, <laughs> it's like well, yeah. this is how other games work. So, yes. Um, yeah, and getting people to find the right information. Yeah, it's really it's a it's a high art, mm -hmm. um, and uh, something I'm working on now with one of my games actually that I'm just trying. We're at the point where we think most of the mechanics work, so we started to make the rule book. And uh, yeah. How do we explain these things? Yeah. Um, and and uh, yeah, um, we've actually luckily have got some interns at the moment, and I'm I'm giving them that job as well. Going, read this, you know, make it clearer, and, mm. and go back and forth over and over again. Um, so yeah, fantastic. Helps, helps to have a team. Helps yes. To have a team. Well, more eyes as possible on. Um, even even before you go to playtesters, having many many people read your rules is really important because once you know the rules, you stop reading the rules. Mm -hmm. You read what you think is written down because you've read it a few times and you know the rules, and you might have the wording completely backwards. And someone was just like, no, no, that's all, that, that, that's written wrong. You put that sentence in the back, and you're like, oh, I hadn't actually read that. The human brain likes to just reword the Shortcut. specs. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's why it's good to get as many eyes onto your game as possible, and that's why the box of spiders is a fantastic idea. That's right. That'll get people to scream and, and really pay so attention. So many eyes per square right. meter. Yep, that's right. The eyes, the, the train, train. Yeah, look, if you're watching this outside Australia, we will be training spiders to play test our games soon because we have so many of them. They outnumber yeah. us, and they are more intelligent than us. Yeah, and uh, yeah, they're going to be they'd be absolutely perfect. Anyway. Every Australian game <laughs> comes packed with spiders. No. Uh, that's not true. That's why we manufacture in China, not Australia. Right. So there's no, yeah. Otherwise, they creep into the box. Um, yeah. So, following our chronologue, we're currently at PAX. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, you did a panel, um, which I witnessed, mm -hmm. and I thought was very good. And it was about. It was winning at business? I think so. It was winning at business? I can't remember. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The business of board games. Uh, yeah. And it was mostly lawyers on the panel. Um, That's right. Yep. We had yeah, Jason like me and, Shannon, and Shannon Kelly as yeah, well. Cocktail games. Yeah. Um, Five lawyers. <laughs> I, I basically I grabbed John Kelly and I was like, "We are going to this fucking panel." Because <laughs> um, I was I was really looking forward to it. He's also um, he knows a bit about business. Too. He also knows a bit about business too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it was really good. And what was funny was I, I bumped into the panelists before and and talking to Jason about it, he's like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know why all these other people know so much more than me. Uh, but it was really interesting because when they actually like were probing you and asking you questions about stuff, you're like, oh, this is you know how I this is the resource that I use. This is how I use contracts and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I did want to touch on that kind of stuff. What do you? What is some good, I don't know, small business advice? What kind of stuff do you do as a small business owner that you think is working well for you? Um, hmm, let's see. 
getting a uh, getting like a CRM is really good. What's so like CRM? I use like <laughs> customer relationship managers and all that. The customer relationship manager, manager. Into software. software. Software yeah. that like yeah manages all your clients and stuff. Right. As well as like my ones I use. So for me, I use Rounded. Um, I was looking into Henry as well, mm-hmm. um, but Round, I really like the Rounded system. Um, and I already have a lawyer, another lawyer and an accountant that I can go with. Okay. Um, yeah. So with that, like, yeah, they will track my uh, track my income, uh, track my clients and stuff like that. Send so invoices, all that, and time track and everything as nice. well. Um, yeah. That. Um, Google Works, Google Workspace, um, okay. yeah, just having a good email, yeah, email client there, and then Taking yeah, having a web, having a website, and then there's a bunch mm-hmm. of government websites that you can check yeah. out as well. Yeah, um, yeah, the Australian government has like small business there's sites, lots of support, stuff. and even courses that you can do on the like a the lot. US government. The Australian government <laughs> wants to support you making starting a small business, and they have a lot of advice mm. about that. So, I um, I yeah. recently did the NICE program, which is the new enterprise investment scheme, oh, where right. they basically teach you how to, to run and do a small business. Excellent. Um, which is basically receiving the doll while running your own small business. Oh. You don't have to look for jobs. Fantastic. Whatever, which is kind of nice. That um, sounds good. But through all that, they've got heaps of resources. Uh, Workforce Australia has heaps of resources for that kind of thing. Um, so a lot of that stuff exists, but I feel yep. like when you're starting out, it's really daunting yeah, and it's so really, yep. what am I doing? Mm. What, you know, what? I, I know what the job is. I don't know what being a small business owner yeah. is. And that's I think a separate it's job. Really. Running yeah. your business is a separate yeah. job from Admin. making yeah. the game. Is, yeah. um, and it's something that I've had to get yeah, slowly, slowly better and better at and learn mm. more about. Something I realized recently is that I don't actually have a, my company name registered. So that's what we're looking at. Yeah, so. I don't uh, know. Yeah, you can. Got to get that. Yep. Yeah, it's my like company's not registered. I'm registered as a sole trader. You can, yeah, you can register as a sole trader or as a company, but either way, you can then register the name you trade under, mm. which is separate. It depends. It's a little bit different in different states, I think. But you can, even if you're a sole trader, you can then register your business name so it's nobody can steal it. Um, sure can that. So that's that's on my <laughs> list for this next, next week or two to get that yep. done. Um, Mine too now, thank yeah, you. Yeah, register your business name, otherwise someone else can go, no, no, that's my name now. Um, yeah, yeah, get done. So that's, like yeah. 100 bucks to get that. Talk mm. about, we talk about people, yeah, no one's going to steal your game design, but they absolutely might steal your company name. Mm. And, and then you you can be much more Especially because there's like 10, like there's like 10 names, Yeah, uh, you know. I mean, Especially, according to the Zodiac, there's 12 people. So yeah. in theory, there's 12 names. I, I was interested that you don't have games in the name of your company. It's just called Toto Tam? It's Toto Tam at the moment, Because it's yeah. both graphic design work and stuff as well. Yeah. It's mm. not just games. Oh, it's just a, it's a classic thing, of course. Yeah. If you want to know what people sell. Almost, yeah, what, what, 90% of all game companies have the word games in their name? Maybe. Maybe less. Yeah. yeah sure. Uh, but I'm just curious. It's it's just just brand, yeah, yeah, rebranding that. It's something I'm trying to work on because, like, I'm also thinking about like rebranding to like Studio Toto Tam. Oh yeah, yeah. And all that because, like, yeah, That's as cool. much as like, uh, yeah, because like, yeah, I got grand visions of like, yeah, doing this as like a creative service as well, but then like focusing on games, mm. then opening up something for retail as well. Mm. So Excellent. yeah, lots yep. of things. But in the meantime, Toto Tam is just like, a, <laughs> yeah, well, everything. It's yeah, I guess yes, so. <laughs> uh, he's got a book coming out. <laughs> all that, all that. Uh, yeah. yeah, but yeah, Toto Tam is also just a nickname of mine, and I'm just using it as a business name. Okay. Mm. It's a good start. Yeah. 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 So I'm I'm now waiting for when Ravensburg is going to open the drive through. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. I'll edit that out. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you wouldn't. You wouldn't think they make games. You wouldn't think they make games. What do they do? Well, we get ravens and we turn them into burgers. That's yeah. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> Well, I think, it was, I think it's the name of the founder. Richard, is it? From Germany. That I found it recently. Awesome. Yeah, the, the Hasbro was the Hassenfeld brothers. Originally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I found that out from Steve's short on right. this channel about exactly that. If you like 60 second board game history, check that out. Mm. Um, and I knew none of the things that he covered in all of his shorts. I'm so I'm watching all of them like, this is great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think especially people who come to the industry in the last 10 years or so, mm. It, it's it's sort of all a mystery what like where things were in the past and everything just sort of like oh sure surely the first the first board game ever was like Carcassonne it's like no, no there's a lot of stuff before that you know yeah um, and yeah so I think it's I think it's useful as a designer to look back at some of that stuff because it it helps you get context and understand that this has been a, this is a very ancient art and there's a lot of stuff out there that you can learn from old games as well mm. absolutely um, mm. and and learn from other business people who've done different things. Um, mm-hmm. 
Like there's the, the, the episode we did about uh, the guy who Parker, who invented Parker Brothers. Um, he, his first game, he basically spent you know, a couple hundred bucks, he printed a hundred copies, he sold them for a little bit more. That's how he started. Um, and he went on to be one of the largest game companies in the world. So mm. um, it all starts small, even though even the giants. Yeah. So that's also useful. Um, yeah. A lot of interesting content on this channel. That's right. Amazing. Look around. Hopefully there'll be links you can click on. We've got the Make an RPG in an hour. Yes. That went up that went to, today. Today. So, so last week. A couple of weeks ago. Which is ago. Yeah. So that was us at South by Southwest mm -hmm. uh, making a role playing game in an hour. Yep. Um, Steve and Izzy from our last pod episode. Yep. Um, and we may see Izzy on here again, we hope. Um, but yeah, that's also, there's also, it's not just making the RPG, we also talk about how RPGs are made mm. and how you can make, again, we're talking about just making a little a short thing. With something like Canva or some editing program, you can make a role playing game that's a couple of pages or a little booklet and looks great. And you can um, put it on, you know, you can put it on your website. There's a game, actually, there's something I've just heard about called Micro Game May. Coming yeah. out next year. Yeah. Um, they're basically, that. yeah, they're, they're yeah. just like make a tiny game and put it on Kickstarter in May. Um, Jesus. So I'm thinking about whether I've got something in PDF to put oh, out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do a Kickstarter and um, fund it after one person buys the game, that's and then I will close the campaign. <laughs> I will have. Yeah, I mean, one backer out of one backer. Nice. <laughs> um, Stuff's too stressful, man. Yeah. Look, that was what I was thinking. It's like, do I really want to do another Kickstarter in May? On the other Isn't hand, a game already micro game. Yeah, How small I mean, is most, game, yeah. Game. most of my games are pretty damn small. So yeah, if, you join the, if you join the group, because like they have a little Facebook group for it, they like oh, sort yeah. of guiding you through um, to your yeah your first process, to your first process, all yeah. that. Like right now, the person who organizing it, I can't remember his name, but um, um, something, something. But like even now, he's like, oh, hey, this is how you set up your Kickstarter page. You should hmm. make it like a game at the end of it to like have something. Yeah, yeah, so if you if you want if you've got something small in your head or in half designed. Look for Micro Game May on Facebook, and you'll be able to help get a lot of help to make your first Kickstarter. And because um, at the moment I think there's at least a hundred people in the group, if a lot of people do it at once, it gets press, mm. and everyone who's there gets attention. Help each other. And also, so. Kickstarter is doing something official with them as well. Oh, that's really? Cool. Oh, okay, that's news to me. Like a showcase or something. Mm. So, um, could be a great opportunity, um, or you might be like, "No, I'm too stressed." Um, too stressed. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm actually having a nice break at the moment. I'm just still designing a million things, but I also yeah. was like, my Kickstarter's finished. I've sent out a bunch. We've filled everything. We have a, we're planning for the convention season for next year, but there's nothing on usually. As we said a couple of weeks ago, December, January is the low period for game designers. Yeah. Um, next real thing is CanCon in what? Well, that's new to January, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I, which I'm not going to. Uh, so my first thing is March. Yeah. So I've got a couple months, so I don't have to be anywhere. Fantastic. But I've also been um, doing an iteration on my current game cut list every week. That's good. So every Tuesday I have new cards to print out and cut up and stuff like that. So I come into the office for and do my little arts and crafts. Yeah, so before we do pod. On that, Jason, like, um, is this your only job, what you're doing at the moment? Uh, graphic design or? Graphic design is your, your, your day job. Your game, you're not just running a game company as your, as your whole job. Yeah. No, no, so like Toto Tan is just more so just like my, yeah, just a hobby. Uh, oh, no, graphic it's, game, it's my business name for yeah. just graphic design and games oh, okay. and all that. Yeah. Um, so like right now, I'm doing, like doing some design work for Keywords Australia, which is okay. a big, uh, big video game studio. Um, I finished up a project with uh, the Bonza, um, yeah. making a game with which them. Which was at PAX. Which was at PAX, yep. yeah. And, um, yeah, and then also just yeah, just trying to find some design, some design work. But this is your well. main hustle. This is my main hustle. Like I managed main. to turn a hobby into a job two years Fantastic. ago, and mm. trying to ride that wave. So there's few of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very very few was, of us. Yeah, I'm curious yeah. about. So some of it though is more like in-house versus working with clients. Is, it, is that difficult to balance? Like you to worry that you're doing, you, know, you have to do so much work with a client, you can't get to the noodles this this week or whatever? No, not really. I, I mean, I'm, I'm an independent so contractor, noodles, right. so um, yeah, I'm not working in-house. I'm not working in-house. Um, yeah, so you can just balance your time. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, I'm just, yeah, I think that's uh, something that And also it's helpful about. that like the first game that I'm launching is a very small game, so yep. yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, so it hasn't, well, how, how would you have an estimate how much time you spend? Well, obviously it's going to go up a lot at the moment for mm -hmm. leading to the Kickstarter. Um, 
But how many hours a week are you working on Noodle Champs? Um, no, about an hour a day at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Most of the like, like I said, the art and stuff is pretty much done for it. Um, but like, it's just more right now. I'm just in the big marketing phase of it because mm-hmm. um, I got a launch uh, launch party for it happening there, on and then also Kickstarter and stuff on December first, which yep. is literally here in this office. It is. Yeah. Yep. Mm. So um, yeah, yeah, free, free, free entry. So anyone yeah. in Sydney, come along. How long is your campaign? Is it going to be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, so my rationale, uh, because I'm launching it in December, which is not a good time to launch a Kickstarter. Um, but yeah, uh, having it still be live over Christmas is a waste of time. It's a waste your of time. final forty-eight hours is on the twenty-fifth. Yeah, your first yeah. point. So I'm like, you know what? I just do a fourteen cam- fourteen-day campaign. And also, yeah. my goal for the first campaign is just to break even, not yeah. to make millions of dollars or mm-hmm. anything like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So I'm setting realistic goals, small yep. goals for that. Um, and two weeks in December is just more so to capitalize on all the stuff that I've been doing at conventions in Sydney because I don't have the budget, time, yeah, yeah. or money. Um, yeah, to uh, do an extensive. Yeah. you know facebook ad campaign overseas and stuff like that so yeah fulfilling locally will also help you more like yeah normally for australian kickstarter creators you'll have it still your largest percent be america um, but if you're pretty much all of your audiences like local australia and you're fulfilling that's gonna be way easier than having to split it so much over yeah absolutely different regions so support local yeah right? yeah my first game, I think we, we did have a slight majority in the US, but now most of my clients are coming from Australia. Oh, interesting. Um, bit by bit, we just built up that local connection. Mm. Um, and uh, because we, and the comms can really help with that. Like, have you seen people come back and see you at events a second time and a third time? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Because like, so I was in Queensland uh, showing my game there. Um, it was a big video game convention and uh, what's his name? Ash from SMG Studios um, in Queensland. He's yeah, he was there, and uh, his, yeah, his kids played my game. Um, really liked it. Um, and then in South by Southwest, I saw him again, and like yeah, brought brought along some of his colleagues to play my game. Huge. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I actually want to um, jump on South by Southwest because you had something really cool um, based on a piece of advice that you gave in a DevCon talk, which was not everyone necessarily wants to be there to play your game. Mm-hmm. Some people want to have something to do or participate in some way, uh, and you had a really cool coloring in. Yeah. Um, so I think people could design their own noodle. Uh, and if anyone actually saw Jason's booth, you could see that there was much more noodles colored in than anything else in the entire place, really. Um, so yeah, how did that that idea kind of come together? So basically, like I said, like I said, with that advice of like not everyone's there to play a game, I always wanted to have something else at the booth. Mm. Um, to for people to participate in, whether it's like, yeah, um, whether it's like, you know, handing out some business cards or like, you know, um, so like, like, I'll just run you through my booth set up at South by Southwest, yeah. the intention of it. So I had two copies of the game demoing of that with metal bowls. So Which has four people playing. Yep. Yeah. Metal bowls, so like, it has like an auditory experience. But then also I had a copy of the game um, on a red mat uh, so people can take photos of it and yep. it's all uh, being like carefully arranged that to make it look nice so people can take photos of it and that. Um, and then, um, yeah, uh, when I was in Queensland, the, um, I handed out chopper chops to winners and to get people encouraged to play the games here. So other ways to, yeah, for people to interact. But South by Southwest, um, I wanted to give out flyers. Um, mm-hmm. And then I was thinking that, hey, you know what? Have like a color ring kind of, kind of thing. It was like, hey, I got noodles in my game. Make your own noodles. And the original idea was like, here, have a flyer, take it home, color it in, put it on your fridge. But then, like, we just stuck one of them up on the wall, and I was like, "Hey, this is kind of cool." And then we just ended up like sticking more of them on the wall. So yeah, yeah eventually we built this massive. People see wall. them on the wall and go, "Ooh, I want to do oh, that. Yeah. I want to contribute to." Yeah, that. absolutely. And like, they don't have to play the game to do that. I had so many people there that just like, um, well, I hit them up with saying like, "Hey, you want to play my game?" Oh mm-hmm. no, not really. Oh okay. You want to color in some noodles? I'm like, yeah, sure. Because there's also but, that the especially for the the younger or the, the parents or kids or whatever. The kids come and do the activity, which is coloring in the thing. Somebody else comes along and <coughs> plays in the other two seats, and then they see it happening. Mm. They're like, "Oh, I now have an understanding of what it is much more to come and want to say yes to play the game." Yeah, absolutely. Whereas if someone comes to your table and the game's not being played, 
um, just by looking at it, it's hard to have an understanding yeah. of what yeah. what is going on. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. So just other ways for people to like interact, not just your game, but your whole brand as well. Mm, that's right. Um, that's right. Every every aspect. Because you're not just marketing to a customer, an external customer. You're also marketing to internal customers and talking to other people in the industry, talking mm. to other people. You had some yeah, sure. really high quality artists come and fucking draw. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really cool. Some it of just the happened that like, ones. yeah, some of the video game uh, artists and devs were like, yeah, just took the opportunity to create really cool noodles. Yeah, and, yeah, and then at the end, of, after doing that, like, it just took some photos and posted yep. it on socials, and it was just another That's opportunity great. to showcase the game. That's it. It get it, people showing off what's what's happening, what cool thing that you're yeah, doing. It also creates an extension. So if, if I like, just say a person comes up, they have no interest in dice games, but they draw a little picture, they put it online, or they take it home, or they go, mm. oh, I drew a picture today of these crazy noodles, and then they're like, oh, what was that for? Yeah. Oh, well, it was this game that I'm now going to tell you about because I, I, I interact with it in that way. And yeah. then that, that person, oh, yeah. oh I, I like dice games. It's just another touch point um, to your brand and just exactly. raising awareness yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. if you have, yeah, with games you can sometimes make a micro version or you know some way that you can engage mm. with it as a bit of picture, as I say, or something that you can do. We talked about this bit last week as well. Ways to just try to get people to, as you say, take a picture, do something, activity, something that engages you with the brand. Um, have a little gift there. Um, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's a little social proof as well because like as much as like I'm telling you that my game's good, it's much more better if like your friends telling you that this game is really That's good. That's right, yeah, yeah. You want to get that, that um, uh, word of mouth, yeah, mm -hmm. um, absolutely. Um, well, what else do we need to talk about? With yeah, so person? South by Southwest, I think was the last thing yeah. that happened chronologically. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the future the mm -hmm. is the launch event. Yep. So, what kind of stuff have you got planned for the launch event? So, December first, Game Plus. I'm um, going to do a live launch of the Kickstarter. What time? Uh, six o'clock. Starting six o'clock. Yeah. That's so the game launch, I think I'm going to be like seven o'clock, eight yep. o'clock maybe. Yep. Um, and I also plan to for international times, but good for local times. Yeah. Which, yeah, I'm just trying to make a really cool event for locals because I'm trying to, with the event itself, I want like people, I know people from like the board game community and the video game community and the design community, I'm hoping this event can bring them all together and we have mm. a fun night of uh, noodles and dice games and I'm also going to have some board games, we also have a bunch of prizes to be won as well. I reached out to some sponsors such as, yeah, Scratch Yourself, don't, yeah, who are sponsoring the prize pool as well as Guff Games, Pocket Games. Um, who else? Uh, Ori Games as well. Oh, yeah, it's written on the invitation <laughs> that I handed out. Nice. Um, so this is another cool my bag. Uh, you know, you've done. Yeah, yeah. Nice so I made like, like, little, nice the I made, like little Uber Eats bags of my game invitation. So I handed out to some studios early, early today. Yep. And that again is this increasing value. If you give someone uh, like a piece of paper with, with an ad on it, they're like, this is an ad. But if you give someone, even if it's just like, yeah, something that isn't physical. Yeah, it's fun, it's on brand. Yeah. <laughs> and like, at the same time, like, um, an invitation itself is like, kind of useless um, yeah. on its own. So if you're able to add value by well, adding something else. Well, the person is also that. like, I can just eat the noodles and ignore the thing. That's right. Yeah. 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 But then like, if they're eating they the noodles, they can also still be thinking about my event launch. Well, like, right. oh, these noodles Back came their from. Head. Yeah. 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 Um, the and they think they're clever. They're like, huh, ah, I'm going to ignore your ad while I eat these noodles. But you're actually, you're going, yeah, that's, that's okay. Yeah, me back closing my eyes while the YouTube video <laughs> that's, right. Players. that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's great to add. Adding value is something we keep talking about because that's something we talk about when, when, talk, when you're like talking to people who are wanting to mentor you or give you advice or support. But it's the same concept in advertising, the same concept in selling. Is the idea mm. is that you are is that you're trying to add value to people's lives and say, you know, and, and whether that's an invitation or, or, or a marketing touch or your game itself, you know, that's, that's the, the concept behind it of going, I think this can make your life better. Um, and that's the goal. We add have joy. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, yeah, so it's, it's all looking very exciting. So be here, mm -hmm. at, if you're in Sydney, at uh, 22 Mountain Street, Game Plus, 6 p.m. December the 1st, which is a Friday. Yep. Friday night. Yeah. And we'll have we'll a link there. to the, the Facebook event in the description. Yep. Um, make it nice and easy to find. Facebook's got a nice little integration. It's got a map and everything on it. Um, and you can see that all your friends are already going. That's right. Yeah. And make that again. Build that energy of, of, a, of a community. Fantastic. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, we'll be excited to see how it goes. And get these noodles out into the world. Get into get the world, yeah. Fantastic. I just want to bring this to life and yeah, have everyone playing, playing my game. Fantastic. Yeah. 
Now we're we're kind of at the at the end. We've just hit fifty minutes thereabouts. Do you have any anything you wanted to shout out while you're here? Oh yeah. Or you've got our humongous platform. You have a website to, that they can find you on if they forget all these details. Yeah, so you can follow me on Insta or Twitter at underscore Toto Tam. Uh Tototam.com.au is my website. T O T O T A N. T A M like T A M M M for, yep. M for Michelle. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, just search Fire Legal Eating Champs on yeah on Google and all that. You should find more information you've about got it. A Kickstarter page up. I got a Kickstarter click page. to be notified. Yep. yep. Uh, so we'll please put that follow in the description as well. Yep. That's a good one. Absolutely. So please follow the page. Um, and if you want a copy of the game, that's going to be the place to go and find it. Absolutely. And yeah, and, hope, and yeah, hopefully you can beat out the launch as well. Um, mm. And yeah, just follow me on socials. Like yeah, post frequently, trying to update everyone about just my projects and all that so yeah and same website if you want graphic support or help making yeah, your game um, and we might see you with the launch as well for, um, yeah show up at the launch and then ask Jason about working on your game project yep as graphic design. distraction <laughs> um, well you probably, yeah, probably need distraction during the Kickstarter campaign because yeah. you'll be like watching those numbers are just yeah, losing your mind so like, make the numbers go up every morning you're going up go up numbers go up um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a lot of stress, but um, we wish you all the best with it and we're really excited to see how it goes. Thank you. If you also have a game that you want to promote that's coming to Kickstarter, we want to have you on here to mm. talk about you and your process and promote the, sh- the hell out of your game um, and, and drive people to your Kickstarter and support the industry, support the local industry. That's it. And speaking of local, uh, a new cool thing that I started recently is Matt Dunson has started streaming yes. on Twitch. Doing a lot of kind of like designer Q and A stuff, walking through and talking about what the job is like and what making games is like. Yeah. Uh, it's on a Monday. I've been really enjoying it. I Matt mean, I is the last one. a full time game designer. He yeah, it's like five games last year. His came out. He got. Uh, if you're for... watching this, looking at us and going, "Oh man, I wish I was those people," we're watching Matt yeah, Johnson like going, "Man, we wish we were that guy." How is he doing that? <laughs> He's, he's very prolific and he's winning awards and he's bloody good at his job. Mm. Um, yeah. Guild of Merchant Explorers is, is one of his and I am just preaching to everyone about that game because it's like nothing else. Mm. And it, it, I think it got a, uh, a, some award that it deserved mm-hmm. um, or nomination and it's really worth checking that one out. And, but he's doing lots of great stuff. And like a lot and of now, people in this city. He's, and now he's back in Australia. Yeah, he's back in Australia. He was at Um and he's he's just giving his brain knowledge away for free on 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 videos and stuff just like us so yeah monday nights live but then you can watch it on his youtube or on his twitch I think so uh he's simulcasting streaming live to twitch and youtube and nice. youtube saves vods nice. of all streams in, in like a separate tab anyway. so you can you can um, find all of that um on his channel so matt dunston oh, i'll post a link to that I'll post links. Yep. Look, just go and look in the description. There'll be all kinds of goodies. We're not going to use our words uh, to tell you things when we can just put it in the links. Yeah. Uh, then you can click on them. It's much easier. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's a good guy and he's also helping put Australian design on the map. Him and Ian O'Toole and Phil Walker Harding have made the world go, hey, Australians are clever. And mm. that's good for all of us as well. You know, like, Absolutely. Um, look at. I'm yeah, I, don't forget Martin Wallace well. I know those Martin people. Wallace as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, I've met Phil Walker. Keith Franks was alright, as I understand. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so just tell everyone that you know us, and that's that's definitely will help. Yeah. Mm. You've, met, you've heard, you know Keith. You work. heard it here third. <laughs> uh, also, I've been working on uh, one of my games, and we will hopefully have we some to play that last week. Yep. Um, which is interesting. Working title is Word Heard, and I've got a lovely artist who's going to make some lovely sheep. Pictures for us, so we'll have I'm one sure. of those. You got it handy. I'll, Where did I'll, it go? I gave it to you. Uh, you showed it to me. Yeah, I don't know if I gave it back or not. Uh, uh, Sounds like game components. Is that no, keys? that's keys. <laughs> right, it's around somewhere. We'll put it in the beat. We'll, we'll do some beat for you. New it's game coming from Steve game. next year. He just jingles his keys in front of your baby. That's right. I just yeah, it's the new. It's a new hotness on Kickstarter. Cool game. Yeah, it's a new game. It's a new game. It's probably by Jamie Stegman. Bye, bye, bye. Oh, oh. Um, yeah, distract, <laughs> distract the game blur. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, it's going to be a cute little sheep game, so we're excited by the art. And um, and that's another step that we've done. We've been working with the artists going, what does this look like? What does that look like? Mm. Looking about whether I'm going to buy a sticker puncher so I can punch all the pictures um. out 
or if I'm going to try to cut them out by hand or with one of those little circle cutters. Yeah. And as well, Elise's got one uh, of them, and it's done good work for her. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, a circle. Cut. Yep. A cry, oh, she's got a cry cut machine. Oh, hello. She's yeah. a kid, man. She's yeah. Got so I was looking at those. They cost about six hundred bucks. So uh, yeah, I might just go to her and say, "Can I? What, can I get one sticker sheet, can, please? Can I get some sticker sheets and I'll yeah. buy you something in return? I'll buy you dinner or something. Yeah. Um, because we can share the wealth. Yeah. Excellent. All right, so we might have some more of those to show if I get them cry cut. That would be cool. Um, that would be cool. And making little progress. Mm. Um, and yeah, testing, 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 as always. Keep testing, keep iterating, keep designing. And we'll see you. I won't be here next week, but I will be at the launch on the 1st. Mm. Do we have any guests coming next week? We haven't worked that out yet. We no. haven't confirmed anything yet. Right, but. I'll be there. Keith will be here, as always. Special guest Keith every hopefully, episode. Hopefully, Elise might be back. Mm. Um, I'll have Elise. Excellent. And um, we will see you all then. And hopefully we'll also have you, loyal viewer, right. in the next episode. Come in, be on our show, ask us questions, if you, and tell us about what you're game designing. Yeah. And we'll also have all the other things that we mentioned before um, all over the channel, um, shorts and longs. Yeah. And like and subscribe. As always. that's, you know, that's the thing. Also, there's a really cool utility now that I've discovered. I don't know if it's going to work for this video, but when creators say the word subscribe on YouTube, there's actually the subscribe button itself lights up with oh, rainbow colors. Wow. Um, so I'm saying the word subscribe a whole bunch of times, so hopefully this button's going a bit crazy. Uh, and please let me know if it works for you in the comments, because it's only sometimes for me, and I'm, I'm really curious about it. Probably this. rolling out a bit. So go, go and click the subscribe button, and then tell me if the, the thing came it's up. It's lighting up. Because that's absolutely not at all a gimmick, I just genuinely want to know. Do any other buttons light up? The like button? No. No. Just the because the subscribe one so it's cool yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you can you can stop the video now. You can you can go home, you can go and watch whatever Mr. Beast is doing these days. That's right. It's probably feeding African people or something or building a bridge to the moon. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll see you in the next episode. See ya. Bye. <laughs>